Here are more of the strangest lottery disputes people find themselves in. Find out the exact reason why her mom sued for her lottery winnings. Number 9. South African Sequence In December of 2020, the South African lottery had a sequence of numbers that left its players calling shenanigans when the seemingly impossible series of consecutive numbers 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and the Powerball of 10 were drawn, the lottery ended up with 20 winners claiming a share of the jackpot. Normally, when people play the lottery, they pick a number that means something to them, like a birthday. The real head scratcher is why so many people chose such an improbable sequence. This had lots of people turning to social media to air their feelings. Some people remarked on how weird the whole situation was, while many saw it as proof that the lottery is rigged. As crazy as it may seem, the odds of getting these numbers is no different than any other sequence. The odds for this to happen are roughly 1 in 42 million. The public outcry sparked an investigation, but no evidence of foul play was ever found. The real question is, what holds the greater odds? Winning the lottery in general, or 20 South Africans picking the numbers 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10? Number 8. Ali Jafar the odds of winning the lottery even once are astronomical. For Ali Jafar of Massachusetts, winning the lottery is almost an everyday occurrence. Since 2014, the Jafar family has been the winningest lottery players in Massachusetts, netting $5.8 million in 2019. But a new lottery policy in Mass landed the Jafars, along with a few other frequent winners, courtrooms. The policy allows the lottery to freeze payments for 90 days to anybody that's cashed 20 prizes worth of $1,000 or more within a year. If their winnings are deemed factually and statistically improbable, the lottery can step in. The Jafar family felt unjustly targeted and believed the state had no right to withhold their winnings. With that in mind, they sued the Massachusetts Lottery for their prizes. The Massachusetts Lottery did anticipate the legal questions surrounding this policy and if they could legally withhold prizes. In their defense, lottery officials claim the policy is meant to prevent money laundering schemes. It also makes sure proper child support, taxes, and fees are paid to the state. As for Jafar and company, no legal action has been taken and no proof of foul play has been found. Number 7. Edward Hairston Co-workers are a huge part of every working person's life. They're the friends that make your long workday better. Sadly, for Edward Hairston of Ohio, his co-workers valued cash over their friendship. The office lottery pool hit the $99 million jackpot, but Hairston was left on the sidelines. Hairston claimed that for eight years, he put $15 per month into a lottery pool with his co-workers, hoping to win the huge cash prize. However, a back injury kept him out of work and the lottery pool for three months. His lawyers claimed it had been an unwritten rule of the office to pay for co-workers on sick leave. Hairston even claimed that he covered some people out of his own pocket when they missed the pool. When he came to get his $2 million share, he was denied. Feeling betrayed and wronged, Hairston took his co-workers to court. During this legal battle, the judge ordered his share of the money to be set aside in case he won. However, the case never saw the inside of a courtroom and was settled privately. Number 6. Americo Lopez Americo Lopez is the story of another office lottery pool gone wrong. However, this time, the office is a construction site in New Jersey. Lopez and his co-workers had worked together for years. They trusted each other and pitched in $2 every week to play the lottery. It was Lopez's job to collect the money and purchase the ticket. In November of 2009, they hit their winning numbers. The only problem, no one knew except Lopez. Instead of telling his friends, he kept the money for himself. Lopez came into work after winning the money and said he needed foot surgery, which would keep him out of work until spring. His friends never considered that he was running away with their winnings and continued their friendship. But word spread about his winnings, and after some online digging, the other lottery pool members found out he'd won big. His former friends immediately filed suit, but Americo's lawyer argued that no written proof existed that the winning ticket was the same one he bought with the pool money. Lopez alleged that he would often buy multiple tickets on top of the one he shared with his co-workers. After all was said and done, it was ruled that Mr. Lopez must share the winnings equally with his co-workers. 
We're beginning to think these lottery pools are a bad idea. Number five, Tonda Lynn. There were many regulars at the Waffle House in Grand Bay, Alabama, but none quite as interesting as Edward Seward. Edward came to the restaurant all the time and regularly tipped the employees with lottery slips and envelopes. These slips came with two conditions. The winner had to share the winnings with all of their co-workers and they'd buy Edward a brand new pickup truck. Sounds like a reasonable deal, right? This went on for a while, but in March of 1999, one of the tickets hit the $10 million prize. The winning employee was Tonda Lynn, but she refused to share the winnings. For breaking their verbal contract, Edward and her co-workers sued her. But Alabama law states that contracts related to gambling, which is mostly illegal in Alabama, were not enforceable. Legally, Tonda was allowed to keep all the money, but her legal woes did not stop there. The IRS later gave Tanya a bill for almost $800,000 after trying to pull off some tax shenanigans of her own. Tanya started an S corporation called Nine Mill Inc. to funnel her money through. In short, an S corporation is sometimes called a small business corporation, which allows income to be passed through their shareholders. Tanya's family members were the shareholders, and Tanya was the majority stockholder. The IRS saw through the scheme after Tanya gave her family members a little over $2 million of her winnings. She claimed they had a verbal agreement to take care of one another if they ever won the lottery and that the money was not a taxable gift. The IRS didn't buy it. And yes, she lost for the same reason she won her previous case. Number four, Robert Martell. To most people, a losing lottery ticket belongs in the garbage. For Robert Martell, his losing lottery ticket is worth 400 ounces of gold, or $750,000, sort of. Martell, a Massachusetts man, bought a $20 scratch-off ticket in New Hampshire. He scratched the ticket and, did you know it, he lost. However, the ticket featured a bonus section to scratch. If you revealed a $200 symbol, you won, but Martell found a gold bar symbol instead. He excitedly went up to the counter to have it scanned, but was told it was a losing card. Not being very happy with this result, he sent in a prize form to the New Hampshire Lottery Commission, but never heard back. Feeling cheated, he took the commission to court, hoping to get either a gold bar or its equivalent in cash, which was $750,000. Martell chose to represent himself in court, but a judge threw the case out in 2021 after Martell failed to refile the proper paperwork. Perhaps Martell does have a chance against the New Hampshire lottery, but he should probably go in with a lawyer next time. Number three, Reese Witherspoon's dress lottery. Now we know this is not an official lottery, but it's definitely a cautionary tale on how not to run a lottery for a giveaway. Draper James, Reese Witherspoon's fashion company, tweeted the following in April of 2020. Dear teachers, we want to say thank you. During quarantine, we see you working harder than ever to educate our children. To show our gratitude, Draper James would like to give teachers a free dress. To apply, complete the form at the link in bio before this Sunday, April 5th, 11.59 p.m. ET. Offer valid while supplies last. Winners will be notified on Tuesday, April 7th. Teachers all over the country went nuts, and over a million of them applied for the giveaway. It was so popular that the Today Show and Good Morning America did entire segments on it. But Witherspoon only had 250 dresses to give away. When participants found out, they sued Draper James for breach of contract. Witherspoon's lawyers argue that the lawsuit attempts to avoid common sense in the belief that a company could reasonably give out so much product for free. They also argued that the wording of the original post was obvious in offering an opportunity to get a dress, not a guarantee. The words, while supplies last and winners, should have been enough. Number two, the Dirty Dozen. In some stories, nobody but the people involved know the whole truth. That was the case for the Dirty Dozen, 12 Chicago co-workers who went from modest bakers to multimillionaires overnight. When they collected the $118 million prize, their lawyer, Michael Hoff, told them that they had to put a name on the form. They came up with the Dirty Dozen. But silly names aside, Hoff knew that he was about to have a lottery lawsuit on his hands. Once word got out about the Dirty Dozen, 11 other employees claimed they were in the pool. When a dispute occurs over prize money, Illinois law states that all funds must be frozen until the dispute is settled. One co-worker, let's call him the 13th man, said he came to work after hearing they won only to be told 
that he was not part of the Dirty Dozen. Another lawsuit claimed they had all purchased tickets as a group and deserved part of the winnings. Those involved finally settled the dispute in 2014. Each member of the Dirty Dozen got $6 million and the other 11 people split a little over $13 million. Number 1. Linza Ford In 2012, a mother-daughter duo entered into a heated legal dispute over who was the rightful owner of a $1 million jackpot. Barbara Quiles, the mother, claimed she authorized her daughter, Linza Ford, to cash the million-dollar ticket. Linza signed the back and even posed for a picture with the big million-dollar check. Because she signed it, Linza would receive $50,000 per year for the next 20 years deposited right into her bank account. Linza claimed she gave her mother access to the account, believing she'd use the money to take care of her little sister and pay off some debt. In 2014, Linza discovered her mother used the money for cosmetic surgery instead, so she locked her out of the account. Barbara didn't take this lying down and sued her daughter a month later, claiming that the money was actually hers. A Brooklyn Supreme Court justice ordered the account to be frozen until the case was settled. After some back and forth, the mother and daughter eventually reached an undisclosed agreement behind the scenes. Click here to watch one of these next videos.